Hey everyone, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Pomoja Wildlife Park. Today we are going to be taking a tour of the west side of the park, which is all complete now. And I'm joined by two members of the Pomoja Wildlife crew. Fresh from his YouTube debut last week, we have the wonderful Diggy Duff. Hi there, good to be back. And making his Pomoja Wildlife Park debut, it is Beezy. Yo, 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 it's your boy Beezy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're at the original entrance to the zoo in the old theme park. Uh, everything that you're going to see today was built by Diggy Duff and Beezy. Uh, and we're going to go on a little tour of it. So this is the entrance. And we're going to move into the original theme park. I presume this is where the staff entrance is now. Is that right? So yeah, this is the entrance that's kind of inspired by a French colonial style. Um, I kind of based it off a theme park in my hometown and uh, it's now kind of a derelict, uh, rundown, out of order entrance. It's kind of been closed off and, and kept as a, for the historical value. It feels very uh, real, if that makes any sense. Like I, originally I had it huge and, and a bunch of different ticket booths and all these things and if you make things smaller they always come across. I agree. I, really I've always said that the smaller the better and we build the stuff smaller it just looks more realistic in this game. And okay. then up here uh, we've got the central fountain that has since been drained since the mm -hmm. new acquisition from the, the new group, the new philanthropist who's come in to turn this place into a wildlife sanctuary. So this place is, is not getting as much love. And <laughs> so uh, I tried to reflect that in the dead leaves and some of the cracks. I love that. Um, I, it really looks derelict, uh, especially the dead leaves. That's one of my favorite little uh, tricks to add detail to something. It's just bury just the tiniest bit of tree in there so all you can see is some leaves scattered on the floor. I like the way it looks old and ruined but still really attractive at the same time. I think the trees are really perfect the way there's like an avenue of uh, trees down here. Yeah what? part of me wondered if I should make those trees look a bit larger so it's like an old growth palm tree mm. if you think about the time frame but they, they just have that kind of classic theme park uh, look that Let's see and I think size wise they're um, they're pretty much perfect they fit in really nicely so up here we have the uh, carousel building on our right and that was a carousel I actually designed for a friend on discord and uh, thought it fit perfectly for this park I can't think of the name of the park where this carousel is located that it's based on but it's one in the United States uh -huh. um, and it just really had that old timey look to it. And then those green buildings there with the wooden paneling on the side are from a uh, old zoo I abandoned and um, saved the blueprints and, and kind of reworked them to fit this, this uh, area we've got here. And I think they turned out pretty well and definitely fit that style. I like the fact that there's, there's definitely sort of an American a classic American theme park vibe, which given that this was built uh, in the backstory by a, um, an American back in like the 50s uh, or <laughs> whenever I said it was. <laughs> um, I think that fits really well. It's got almost a, um, I don't know, I might be misremembering this, but it almost feels slightly like San Diego Zoo Oh, it's been a long time since I've been. Yeah, I've never been to San Diego Zoo. It's on my list, but I, you know, I think a lot of uh, old theme parks and zoos have that kind of promenade mm. area in the front with the fountain. That's pretty typical. Um, and then up here, here's some more things that I reworked into work uh, fitting in this zoo. So I already had that shade structure made in the, uh, the same zoo that that green building was from. Oh yeah. And then the play structure there is from my franchise zoo that I made and I kind of made that round courtyard that I really like how it, it kind of all ties in with the rounded shade structure and the Yeah, it fits kind really of center well. Piece. I especially like the, the sort of kiddie bridge between the, the two towers. That is really nicely done. 
Right, so let's move on to the um, Twisted Tiger. This is a Tiger Temple that was a collaboration between um, BZ and Diggy. Um, this is more of something that was in the theme park originally and that has then been upgraded to form uh, a habitat. Um, so I think BZ started this. What was your uh, sort of inspiration and vibe for this? My inspiration for the Tiger Temple came from, I believe it's Houston Aquarium. Um, they have a very small, tiny white tiger uh, enclosure, all indoor. And that was my idea at first. Uh, then I lost inspiration and uh, Diggy was like, yeah, I'll finish it out. And he came up with it. <laughs> cool. So this is based on an aquarium that keeps a tiger. That's an unusual animal for an aquarium. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's no longer there. It was one of those things where, you know, animal activists, you know, rights activists were fighting with this aquarium for years trying to get the tiger out of there. And I think they finally got him out in like 2018. So is this like the temple part of this? Is that sort of what size they were they had there or is this bigger than what Co they had? Correct. No, the indoor area, once we get inside, is pretty much all that they had at that. At oh, that. man, that is yeah, it was pretty tight. Not good. <laughs> I love the, the combo between what you've done. So Diggy has added the old roller coaster, which is what this, this ride would have been um, back in the day when this was the theme park. Um, and then we have the outdoor space that's been added onto it. Uh, this would actually be a good size uh, IRL for tigers, I think. Um, similar to quite a lot of tiger enclosures that I've seen. All the, uh the Wyatt Andrews uh, foliage technique using that crowsberry bush to kind of get some grass because this map's so darn dry looking. Oh yeah. And uh, bringing some greenery. Yeah. And I think that did the trick. I think we spend, you know, 50% of our playtime just sinking vegetation into the ground. <laughs> oh, honestly, probably more than 50% of the time. <laughs> no. what, what's your percentage, Beasy? <laughs> I say probably like 75% and then trying to make it look more natural not exactly you know lined up the same it, it takes a long time yeah I absolutely love this entrance I should mention the roller coaster was from the workshop I did not build that I do not mean to steal the credit because that <laughs> is an amazing uh, modular set that somebody built okay put cool. on there that came in handy I'll add the um I'll add a link to the video description as well, so you can go and check that out if you want a roller coaster in your zoo. Uh, we just did a load of custom signs for the zoo as well, so all the animals have got a, um, a custom sign. This is the inside of the temple, which again, I really like. It's really nice to tour something that I've had pretty much nothing to do with, because I can talk about how nice it is without uh, just <laughs> feeling really arrogant because <laughs> I take no credit for this at all but yeah it works really well it will when you show off your stuff we'll make sure to give lots of compliments <laughs> you better I'm gonna write the script for you <laughs> this is the greatest thing I've ever seen <laughs> but yeah it's uh, it, I can't believe that this was just this bit was like a whole habitat that's not ideal <laughs> uh, is this your work Beasy? Yeah, that's my climbing structure as well. Nice. I, I believe it's that's in my climbing pack on the oh, right. workshop. Yeah, I believe that's on my climbing pack. I really like the um, this. I think it's just a load of small logs stuck together, but to get this twisted. Yeah, that's all it is. And some nice custom uh, anti-climb barriers as well. Always good. Okay, so let's move on and take a look at the next part of the uh, the park now. I really like this view as you come out of the. Yeah tiger temple you can actually see the teeth of the tiger peeking down chomping down through the uh, the door and that frames yeah, exactly. this uh, implied aviary as well uh, is it an aviary or is it for like a small primate or I'm not sure you know I figure you could throw some capuchin monkeys or something in there I don't oh, have yeah. anything too specific in mind but uh, it's just there for now and if and you or Jesse or anyone want to put something in there by all means okay so around here we've got a duck pond from Diggy and then we're gonna move into the safari lodges which is the 
sort of the accommodation within the park. But we'll look at this lake slash pond first. I see some uh, some classic pedalos in there, Diggy. Yeah, those were some um, swan boats I made a while ago with no real intention for them. Yeah, someone was trying to make a swan and I figured I'd go ahead and give yeah, it a shot. And he did a I good job. I was pretty happy with how they turned out. I think Paulsley made some uh, swans too. He had a pretty serious swan lake that he had created. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was enormous. That puts us into shame. This is a, a little dirty, sad, uh, abandoned pond that we have here that's just kind of sitting there now and I like it. getting lost the nature. Yeah, I think it fits in really nicely with the pavilion, the sort of, uh, I guess that's like the dock, <laughs> so to speak, where you'd get on your um, swan pedalo and uh, mm -hmm. pedal off. Well, I'd say into the sunset, but it's not really big enough to pedal off into the sunset. But you could certainly pedal off into the other side of the pond. Uh, I think this is the way into the car park for the lodges. You can see I absolutely love this build in the background. That um, there has only just been built. That is the elephant house in the safari, which Ina Meinung has built, um, which we'll be looking at in uh, episode four along with all the rest of the safari and some other cool stuff. But yeah, it just looks really cool in the background. It's such an amazing shape. So this is uh, your work, Diggy, I presume? Yeah, so my idea here was having some place that if you were staying in the overnight tents, you could come here and park your car after going on a safari and um, enter the lodge, which is coming up here. Yeah, so if I've understood it correctly, the on the left, there were like, um, these these huts with the green roofs which are sort of the the budget option for the Pomoja visitor and then behind it is the the more high-end option is that right yeah pretty much um, again the <laughs> another blueprint I had laying around were these green tents and uh, they weren't doing much in my blueprint folders so I figured <laughs> I'd put them to good use here yeah they fit in really nicely so and yeah they work great for the low budget kind of option yeah the fancier stuff you got and then back this way is where you would check in right yeah that's the the idea and i see jesse put in some uh workers there which had a nice touch i always forget you can add uh people just standing still but yeah I, I only just started doing that just putting down like one bit of path keep someone trapped there forever and then this is the main safari lodges area so this is um there's a restaurant um and uh, a lot of different animals to see which are all sort of grouped together in a more um safari park kind of way more of um big open uh enclosures with fencing um rather than the the tiger temple where it's more of a feature exhibit uh, this again is just a really, really beautiful area. I'm a big fan of this. Uh, what have you got animal-wise in here? Up here, uh, there's uh, what did I put here? I have some flamingos, some wildebeest, and the common warthog and the common ostrich. And I just wanted them to kind of see like they're roaming freely around the lodge grounds. We've got some crocs in here as well. Oh, there's one having a little sleep over there. Uh, Crawford, I was sitting right in the purpose spot, like he knew we were coming to take that picture. <laughs> I just think a bridge over a body of water that's got something that could eat you in it is always a uh, a good move for a for a zoo or a park. It's always, it's always a it's always a thrill. <laughs> it's got a moat with crocodiles. <laughs> it's well defended. <laughs> I think there's flamingos on the left. Down. Oh no, is it wildebeest or something? Is this all one like giant enclosure all the way across here? Or are they actually separated? Uh, it's broken up in sections. Oh, okay. But I tried to hide those breaks. As you did a good job because I possible. did not know that. Love this wall as well. That is some excellent work. Thank you. Yeah, this was kind of inspired by uh, two places I had in mind. One was uh, this place in Northern California called Safari West, which is an overnight safari camp. That's where oh, the nice. tents came into play. And then there's also a reference image I saw of a safari lodge in Zimbabwe. That was a major influence for this. 
I love all the thatched roofs that you've got around here. Yeah. Oh, these canopies. Diggy knows I love these canopies. <laughs> That's how I feel about these things. Yeah, this project was a great practice and uh, using that African column piece to rotate stuff. Yeah. So this, I think this is a restaurant here. This the one with the eatery inside? Yeah, this is my favorite building. Yeah, this is yeah. Um, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, uh, I like these cloches as well. You built, you built this whole thing, like with the food and everything? You did all this stuff? Uh, yeah, except for the, uh, I know mining added some uh, little details like that fire, uh, emergency fire button thing on the wall. But uh, but this is so oh, good. Man, look at that. The way you get the light from the um, the canopy. Like, and then there's a hot like, tub. Like a jacuzzi? Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I've never, this is the first time I've seen this and I've been in this zoo. Yeah, where have you been, man? <laughs> I don't know. So behind all this amazing restaurantiness is Ape Mountain, which is a uh, mainly, I think, Beezy's work, but with the, um, other stuff from Iron and Mining and Diggy as well. But yeah, this is pretty but cool. Yeah. It's been a while Ooh, since man. it was built. We finally got the um, the animals in there. Um, I just put those in today. I hope you're happy with where I put them actually of easy, but this is where I chose to sort of separate them. But it looks very good indeed. Yeah, that works. So it's one giant habitat, and then it's mainly rock work and uh, foliage that keeps the animals separated. So we've got the gorillas here. Uh, so I think BZ pretty much built all of this, and then Ina Mining put the giant um, gorilla head in the back. So yeah, that's a pretty nice view while you're eating your dinner. And then down here we've got uh, orangs. Uh, Chimpanzees should be on that side, I believe. Uh, Maybe. So oh. No, that looks like an orangutan. Yes, yeah, so we've got the orangs up here. And then I put the uh, chimps at the end here. Oh, there's one. They've got a little cave as well, which I hadn't noticed first, which I like. And those big fat ropes that uh, you love, Beezy. I'm a big fan of those that you made. I'm trying to do something different. And I make climbing structures all the time, so I've got to start experimenting with new stuff or it's going to get real repetitive. Yeah. You are the, the king of the climbers. We all know that. <laughs> but yeah, this is just a really nice area. I love how yeah, that's natural good. it is. That does look good. You also made something up there, but I only discovered today there's no way to get to it. Uh, so we will have to fly there. Ah, oh, man, I forgot about this. The parrot cage. I love this. This is Diggy, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Diggy. I'm to fill up the space and catch your eye it's really really it's good great. one day one day guys there will be actual birds in there <laughs> one day not today but actually i've got to say these parrots normally i never ever use the um, sort of workshop animals i just i just do not like them nothing against them like it takes an enormous amount of skill to use all the bracket pieces and stuff to put those together but I just I can't be doing with them but for some reason maybe it's because they're really small maybe it's because they're behind mesh but I think they actually work in this little habitat yeah if you're not paying too close of attention then normally they stick out like a sore thumb but um, I quite like that love some little backstage uh, stuff down here as well I love the um, sort of decayed effect that you've put on everything diggy honestly that's the most fun part is uh making something that looks cool and then tearing it apart <laughs> putting vines and breaking it and yeah. all that stuff this is really um really effective as well i think down here it just feels feels real um the way you've made the fo mix the foliage in with the the in-game grass as well with the river in the background i really really like this yeah, view it looks, yeah it looks beautiful it's a beautiful view right here let me jump out of tajikam because i just want to go and see the the other climbing thing that you built busy which is right at the top the idea was that it was like a an indoor area where the guests really don't have access to it 
the, the monkeys can just use it on their own. Oh, right, like a sort of um, a separation area or something like that. It would kind of also just be more of an, an indoor sleeping type area for oh, whatever yeah. prime they want to get up there. It's actually a nice view that the monkeys have as well. I could live here. It's not bad. Easily. Well, great work, both of you. I absolutely love this entire area. Um, that is everything that we've got to show you today. We'll be back next time with another one of my builds. So thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.